welcome to the annual rheumatology conference um, of Europe here in Madrid, ULAR 2019. I'm Rinalini and I'm an academic rheumatology trainee from Liverpool in the UK. So, as you can see, we're just doing the countdown, the final countdown for ULAR 2019 to begin. Just look at all the people in the hall. And we have just five seconds. I better go and take my seat. Do enjoy. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Hello. Nice to see you again. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, dear friends of ULAR. A very warm welcome to the ULAR 2019 Madrid opening plenary session. My name is Ana Plasencia and I'm very honored and pleased to be your host again as I was two years ago on the same spot. You are here to promote and support the research, prevention and treatment of rheumatic diseases and Madrid and Spain are very proud to have you all here this afternoon and for the coming days. Muy buenos días, señoras y señores. Bienvenidos al Congreso Europeo de Reumatología Eular 2019. Mi nombre es Ana Plasencia, vivo y trabajo en Berlín. Ya hace dos años estuve aquí para saludarles y es un verdadero placer volver a estar aquí con todos ustedes. So let's get this opening plenary session officially started. I would like to invite on stage the president of Eular, Professor Hans Belsma. Welcome. Hans, welcome. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. It's ha a very nice temperature now. Yeah. Much ha better than two years ago. Why? Because two years ago we had a beautiful congress here, but it was so hot that everybody needed to go inside because the air conditioning was working. That's so everybody true. attended all the sessions. And I hope it will be done today again. Yeah. How do you feel about being back in Madrid again? It's a, a wonderful, it's a wonderful city, it's a very dynamic city, it's a city with a lot of culture, a lot of nice green things, but also a city with very nice people. But especially I'm looking forward to meet people from the Eula community, mm. which will be here. Of course. Uh, Hans, two years ago you celebrate the 70th anniversary uh, of Eula. We were here yes. in Madrid with impressive numbers. What about Absolutely. this year's edition? Tell me a bit. Well, we saw already some of the figures uh, going on. Mm. So we again have over 14,000 people, not all of them in this room at this moment, but 14,000 uh, attendees at the Congress, 5,000 abstracts, 125 sessions. So it's enormous. It's not only the quantity, but it's also a very high quality of what we're going to see the coming days. Mm, impressive numbers indeed. Um, what are these highlights? Could you mention a few of them also, uh, perhaps about the collaboration with the pediatric colleagues? Yes. So the content of the Congress will be a highlight as such. But yes. we have two important things to celebrate this year. One of them being that we are together with the Pediatric Society for uh, Rheumatology because we can learn a lot from each other and we are very looking forward to inform each other. So that's a very important highlight. And the second one is a more recent one. 
So this year, it's 10 years ago, that a group of young rheumatologists and young scientists started Eminet. And Eminet is really bringing a lot of innovation forward within EULAR. And we're celebrating 10 years of Eminet as well. So we have a look at all the decades of diseases mm. and the young people helping us. We're talking about that uh, also a little bit later. So we saw it on screen, Hans, nearly six, 600 speakers, lots of sessions, lots of discussions, yeah. impossible to attend them all. Absolutely. What, what would you advise to the participants not to miss any content? Well, because there are 13 parallel tracks and most of us are only able to follow one track at a time. Yes. So there will be a captured content, which is available for everybody. You will get a link after the Congress, if you have ticked the box in the right time. And then you will be able at leisure to look at all the other sessions you missed and you still wanted to see. So with this link, I can get this uh, content. Absolutely. You can Very see. good. Hans, if I'm not mistaken, you worked on a five-year strategy uh, that was launched a year ago. Tell me a bit more about that. First, one thing about this slide, because we have the European family, and that is also an important thing yes. this year. So we have, as you the saw, focus on the over members 100, 100 different members, and we asked all our members to tell something about themselves. And if you go outside at Esplanada, you can see all the different countries, what they are doing. And we the welcome you to have a look at that. Yeah, there were the posters there on the Esplanade with the Absolutely. 45 member countries. Okay. Now to the five-year uh, strategy, yes. yeah. tell me more. So we have six areas that we are wanting to proceed in the coming five years, to put emphasis on. And the first one is about the School of Rheumatology. So we're aiming at uh, being the leading provider of education in our field. And we have uh, started a lot of education activities for many years already. We have the EULA online courses for over 12 years now, but we're completely updating them. We're making use of the new educational insights, and we have made the membership available for the people to become a member of the EULA school. And you can see this here. For a limited amount of money, you get access to our app, you get discounted activities, but probably next year we will be able to increase the possibilities for this membership. The second objective is the Congress itself, and it has involved in many ways. Tell me how. So the educational program uh, will change a little bit in the sense that we are trying to be innovative in how we bring our message. So that means that this year, for the first time, there will be live report of our sessions. There will be a Euler television. There will be uh, people, young rheumatologists, who are scouting the whole Congress and bring every morning the news that was of the last day that was remarkable for them. So that will be very interesting to see, not only for the people here, but especially also for the people who are unfortunately unable to join us here. Mm, that's very good. Third goal, quality of care. Quality of care is, of course, very important because that's what we aim, to give our patients the best quality of care that's able. So that is dealing with research, of course, dealing with education, but of course, guidelines how to treat different diseases. So Euro has been very active in making recommendations and the penetration of these recommendations is very high. So we stopped counting at 1,000, looking at all the different publications that were in different countries, for instance, in Poland, the translation of the Euler recommendations. So we think they are quite well known, but they are not always implemented. And we think it's very important to be active working on implementations of the recommendations. So we're now proposing that every new recommendations will be joined by a package that will help people with suggestions for implementation, but also suggestions of what kind of outcome measures we need to make to be sure that we're making a difference. So it's more a package than only recommendations. Mm. The fourth strategic goal targets research. Research is key, and by 2023, your objective is to have established a European Centre for RMD research. Absolutely. So we're very much looking forward to that. Perhaps most of the people will know that in the last 
a strategy we started the Foreum Foundation, a foundation, independent foundation uh, based in Switzerland that's collecting money for research and that is in some way connected to EULA. So EULA is not going to fund research, but we're going to make it possible for people in making a platform to facilitate research, be it clinical research, for instance, investigators driven uh, clinical trials, but also basic and translational research. And we're having some successful workshops already where we are making progress in this area and we hope to be able within a few years to give a platform to facilitate research not only increasing the quality of research but also make enabling it to areas where there is not much research at this moment to start research in this area so the two goals mm. Fifth strategic objective is about advocacy and uh, I seem to understand that you have done a lot on this field. Can you tell, uh, tell us how active you have been there? So Jula is very active in the Brussels area but also at national level. But in Brussels it's of course very important because many of the rulings and many of the funding of research is coming via Brussels. So we have been active in the rulings for, for instance, access to uh, care, uh, access of buildings, things like that, which are very important for patients with uh, some handicaps. But also we have been very active in getting public awareness for RMDs and also to get some more money uh, available for research in our field. So um, we have been quite successful. So we have calculated that in the last five years, more than 80 million euros has been spent from the EU money to RMDs, which is a real um, something to be proud of. Mm. So for the coming years, our advocacy will focus on work, because work for a patient is very, very important. We are looking at two items. One, to be preventive of people getting RMDs due to work activities, to labor. And the other one is, if you have an RMD, to keep the person at work as much as possible. Because work is very important, not only for financial reasons, of course that's a very important reason, but if you are unable to work, you're not fully participating in society. So for the self-esteem of the patients, this is paramount. So we really like to focus on key patients at work. Mm. The sixth goal of this strategy, Hans, is governance. How will yeah. EULA establish governance by 2023? So EULA is now 72 years old. And about 20 years ago, we updated the way we are working. But now we are 20 years later. And there has been a lot of changes in the world around us. If you look at digitalization, if you look at contact with people, if you look at being in charge of something, so we really are thinking, rethinking, are we doing it in the best way we can do? So we're having now a small governance group that will look at an update of how we are uh, working. But an important thing we decided is that in the past, Euro was outsourcing a lot of our activities to other people, to other groups to help us there. And at some moment in time, we realized that slowly we were losing a little bit of control and we want to have that control back. We want to think that we can do many things ourselves and therefore we have increased the staff of our EULA house. To just give you an impression, um, four or five years ago we had seven people working in the EULA house, now we have 15. That is a doubling. Mm. It's still quite small if you compare it with our friends in, in the United States. The ACR has over 100 people employed, but they have other items How to many? Do. 100? Over 100. Over 100. So we're still small. But I think it's necessary to be more in control. And, and you are in the good way. Absolutely. Mm. Um, you already mentioned it a bit, Hans, about digitalization, about uh, getting content through internet, through the homepage, through social network. But other means of uh, spreading education and knowledge and information are journals. And Euler has reasons to be proud of its publications. We are absolutely very proud of our journals, but another way of communication is also of getting an individual membership for EULAR. Mm. So we were discussing this morning in the General Assembly, which is the highest body of EULAR, the possibilities to think in the future about letting people, an individual member of EULAR, that really would 
improve the communication with our members. So that's a pertinent item. And the research communication, we are very proud of our journals. So Anosophromatic Diseases is for many years the leading journal in original research in rheumatology with an impact factor well above 10. And RMD Open, which only started four years ago, is going in the same direction. So we're very happy with these journals. So for the people who attend this Congress, the journal is included in the package, but you need to go to the yellow tower to put your name in there, and then you will get automatically the journal. So go there, not now. Not now. Not now, and get your journal. Very good. Hans, do you have a last message to address? I think so. I, yes, of course, because EULA is a big organization, so we have staff members in Kielsberg who are doing a terrific job, but all the other work is done by people outside Kielsberg, people who have their normal jobs, people who are, as a volunteer, working for EULA. And I would really like to thank all those people, because EULA cannot be without the work of all those people. In addition, I would like to thank the staff of MCI, our public, uh, our PCO, which is helping us to bring very nice congresses to you. We are very proud of this cooperation. And I would like to thank the co-members in our steering group who have been working with me the last years. Ian McInnes, Gerd Boermeister, Anne-Maria Nokio, and Julie Rautenstrauch. And perhaps it's nice to mention that we just elected a new president-elect. And for the first time in over 30 years, that will be a woman again. So Anna-Maria Janocco, you see in the picture, is after this Congress the president-elect. And we are very proud of that. I think that deserves a very big round of applause. Thank you so much, Hans. Stay with me on stage. I would like now to welcome uh, some of your colleagues. Um, so please welcome with me, ladies and gentlemen, the President of Press, Professor Berend Praken, and the Vice President of EULAR for the Health Professionals in Rheumatology, a woman, Professor Tanja Stamm, and for PARE, Mr. Dieter Wieck. Welcome. Berend, Tanja, Dieter. Berend, we start with you. You are the president of the Pediatric Rheumatology European Society. We already talked a bit uh, about you also with Hans. I think you have an important point to make on awareness. Yeah, I think the first point, which is really important for our patients uh, and the parents of our patients, is awareness. Because still many people think that only old people like me get rheumatic diseases. You are not old. Come on. Oh, You're oh, fishing. Thank huh? you. I was fishing for this. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, but if there's no awareness, there's no recognition, there's no understanding, and then we cannot do what Hans pointed out, help them to fulfill a, a, a great career in the end. But to, to participate in sports, to participate in, uh, in school and all the other activities. And this is something which is, does not only account for uh, Europe, but also for uh, globally. So mm. we had a World Day last year, uh, this year, which reached out to over 600,000 people worldwide uh, to raise awareness for pediatric rheumatology. Mm. Tell me, uh, what can pediatric rheumatology bring to ULAR? Okay, you give me 15 minutes or not? No, no, you won't. No. I, I okay. give you uh, okay. one minute. I think it goes both ways because I think we can learn a lot from each other. Um, I feel that I was, I grew up in pediatric rheumatology in splendid isolation. I was among my friends, among my colleagues, and I learned from them. But this is the time to reach out. And I think we can learn a lot from adult rheumatology and the other way around. Because the next era, I really believe, needs people who do boundary crossing who reach uh, uh, across the aisle and learn from each other. So I think this is, we can learn from each other. Mm. Um, perhaps a few words about Emerge and the collaboration with Emunet. We already mentioned it, the Emerging Euler Network. So I think um, that's the future. 
uh, our young people, both from Eminet and Emerge, they have huge challenges. They're different from when uh, Hans and I were starting our careers in, in rheumatology and pediatric rheumatology because they have big data, they have open science, they have fake news, all these things. And you see there's a lot of burnout among young residents. So I think for them it's really important to get together. And last night they had a beautiful evening together. I hope they will all be here now, but I, I'm not Are sure. you here? Uh, young people, are they still young here? Young people, are you here? Okay, I there's one, <laughs> I see, one. there's one. <laughs> so okay. the other are So they had, they had, uh, a, they had yeah. a great party, and um, like what Mike Beresford, the one who put the, the pediatric program together, said to me yesterday, the future is in good hands, because they are really working together. Yeah. Very good. Uh, what do you expect from the uh, Congress, Belen? Lots of inspiration and fun and spending time with good friends. You will. Thank you so much. Tanya, yeah, go ahead. You are the Vice President of the Health Professionals in Rheumatology Standing Committee. Could you give us an update on clinical issues and campaigning? Yeah, thank you, Anna. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, dear Mr. President, I would first of all like to say a warm welcome to all the health professionals here at the conference. And I think it's really a few areas which are important and which have been important in the last year and are important in the future, which are primary care and the changes in many European countries, the uh, new digital technologies and the aging populations, which, for example, increase the number of people with osteoporosis the arthritis. And I think health professionals especially are delivering important uh, care for these people and important is to have the best point of service for this evidence-based care that health professionals are doing. And I think the best point of service very often is where people live. It can be in schools, it can be at the workplace. And especially the campaign around work, I think health professionals have a lot uh, to offer here and we have a lot of evidence-based Based, uh, strategies also. Yeah? So I think um, this is, has been a very uh, successful uh, year. Tell me a bit more um, about the activities in research of HPR. Yes, thank you for that question. I uh, think that's also very important. And I would like to cite the Julia Rautenstrauch here, who is the executive director of EULA. And I very much agree with that. Julia said that the health professionals are doing very well. And I think I can only very much agree to that. We have numerous research projects which have been conducted in the last year. And I really look forward to all the sessions here at the conference and to all the uh, educational offerings that have been developed in the School of Rheumatology and I think there is lots of possibilities for health professionals to get involved in uh, the school, uh, in, in uh, taking educational uh, programs from the School of Rheumatology, going to the sessions but also having, uh, being actively participating in projects and task forces and I think uh, we are uh, doing very well in this area and we are looking forward to another successful year together with the people with rheumatic uh, diseases, with the para people and together with the rheumatologists. Tell me a bit more, Tanya, how can the interest of young professionals uh, be aroused? This is a very important point. I think that young in the uh, relation to health professionals often does not only mean young in age, but also mm -hmm. young in the research career. And I think and EULA really offers lots of possibilities for young health professionals to get involved. And I think these can be study groups, this can be um, coming to the conference, getting in uh, collaboration or in, in uh, discussions and networking uh, with more established research researchers and clinicians, and I think that's a very important issue. And in terms of young uh, patients and, and young health professionals, young rheumatologists, I also would like to focus and to, to look into uh, the area of press, because we are also looking very much forward to cooperating with health professionals from the pediatric uh, rheumatology. Cooperation, a very big issue. Thank you so much, Tanya. Uh, Dita, Vice President of PARE, yeah, go ahead, <clears throat> but with a bit more energy, perhaps. <laughs> Thank you. Dita, what does PARE focus on this year? Tell well, PARE has got a lot to offer. I think first thing is people are interested in medication, definitely. So one of our topics is right after this opening session is about biologics. 
uh, biosimilars because we see that lots of patients, uh, some more and more uh, biosimilars are getting onto the market, that they are being switched to biosimilars. So, well, it is a key topic for patients, and they are scared that they are switched from one, let's say, cheaper product to another one. Mm. So, this is very important to update them. Then, um, it is not only medication, definitely, it's also all non-pharmacological interventions. People are interested in what about nutrition, what can help, what about sleeplessness, fatigue, and so on. So it will be about non-pharmacological interventions. Um, and we see all of us have got these uh, little tools, technical tools in our pocket that we use to have internet access. And there are so many apps on the market now. Mm. And to give some kind of guideline what is possible, this is another topic, uh, digital solutions that may improve self-management. Mm. That brings me to my second question. Uh, and this campaign, Don't Delay uh, Connect Today, launched two years ago. We were all here. Yeah. Uh, is uh, um, also still going on. Yes, we need, we see a very nice picture from Cyprus that we had. Uh, Hans, our president, already referred to that uh, campaign and talked about that campaign. Uh, I'd like to add one point in addition just, well, for young people, it's especially if they've gotten IMD, it's difficult to get into a job. Mm. So the campaign is about staying in job, about prevention, but also getting into a job. And this is what we would like to promote as well. Yeah, then you already see another slide. Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. In that yeah. One of it's a, the next question, right? Yes. Yes, young people have got RMD2. How uh, or in how far is this considered? Yeah, I know. don't know how many people from ENCA are here, your European network uh, of children with arthritis. Anybody who can put up the hand? No, nobody there. No, they are coming late. Yeah, I see some. Oh, they're no, there. They're yes, there. great. Great to have you here. You Welcome. know, for, for young people, when they have got this ideal rheumatological world, um, we've got here on my right, and then uh, they get to the adult rheumatologist, they are very often shocked. Mm. What is that? What kind of treatment is that? So it is about this transition phase, and this is what we're going to have tomorrow, and another topic also for young people in particular, that it's, it's about comorbidities, that also young people can have these comorbidities. In what way is, uh, are those party sessions different? Well, they're sure. different in that way, I think, that we really try to include um, the perspective of clinicians, health professionals, and patients. We hope that they are all in the lay language. Um, so I think uh, it is really for a broader community, and uh, I hope people will come and come to our power sessions. They will. Thank you so much. Tanya, Dita, Beren, thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Give them a big round of applause, please. And now we are moving on. Hans, and you stay with me here on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now to start our traditional award ceremony to honor some outstanding contributions to the Congress, to EULAR, and to the world of rheumatology. So, shall we start, Hans? We have 11 categories and 35 winners, so it's a lot. We start with the Undergraduate Abstract Awards. The winners are... The winners are Roline Kroll from the Netherlands. Huyu... Go ahead. Huyu Zhu from China and He Chan from China as well. Now you can give them the applause. Welcome. Congratulations. Van harte proficiat. Doen is dat je gewoon weer doorloopt, hè? Ja. Congratulations. And just checking. Yes, that's you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Very well. Come on. Please. Okay. Thank you. Please. Second abstract awards basic science. The winners are Hans. Olivier Malaise from Belgium, Richard Stratton from the United Kingdom, John Boos from the United Kingdom, Kate Duffus again from the United Kingdom, Remy Pollock from
from Canada and Anastasia Filia from Greece. Congratulations. Official. Congratulations. One is missing. Congratulations. But this doesn't matter, he will get his prize afterwards. Congratulations. You okay, Davis? Congratulations. Anastasia. Muchísimas felicidades. Thank you very much. Abstract Awards Clinical Science. The winners are. Again, six winners. Yeah. Liana Kersley Fleet from the United Kingdom. I Lee Jo from Australia. Yusaful Yusuf from United Kingdom. Fenne Wouters from the Netherlands. Hirotaka Matsuo from Japan. And Anna Maria Hofmanfeld from Norway. Congratulations. 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 Officier. And I see some women. This is a very good news. Give them another big round of applause. Thank you so much. Okay. Health Professionals in Rheumatology Abstract Awards. The winners are. Ross Wilkie from the United Kingdom, Elsa Marit Gravas from Norway, and Lindsay Byrne from the United Kingdom. Lindsay Byrne is missing, but you are Ross. she will get her prize, of course, also. Congratulations. Elsa Marit, congratulations. Pare Abstract Award, and here we have one winner. The winner is Tenja Sarela from Finland. Welcome. Congratulations, Tenja. Congratulations. Very yeah. Forium Abstract Award. The winner is Juan Carido Castro from Spain. Felicidades, Juan. Enhorabuena. Bienvenido. <laughs> a ti. You have a lot of support here. Congratulations. Now we have. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We have three awards in uh, gold, silver, and bronze. It's the Press Courier Award. And the gold one goes to Hans? Fabrizio de Benedetti from Italy. Auguri. <laughs> yeah, perhaps we'll wait here for each one. Fabrizio, come, come up on stage. Benvenuto. Special music for you. Hans Silver goes to Isabella Conneport from France. Mm -hmm. She's not here, but is someone getting her prize and yeah. her name? So welcome. She will get her prize later on. So on behalf, <laughs> yes. On behalf, thank you. And bronze goes to. Grant Schulet from the United States. Congratulations, welcome. Congratulations. So we move on to the Edgar Steen Prize. The winner is. So the winner is Ovidio Constantinesco from Romania. And this is a very special prize, as you know. It's an essay, and the essay you can read, you can get the Castine booklet at the Paraboot, and then we can all read your things. So very Thank you. Thank you also, Lisette. 
Forium Platinum Recognition, the winners are. So we are very happy to acknowledge our Forum Forium Platinum members. There are three of them. Isabella Logart for Pfizer, Immaculada de la Torre for Lilly, and Emmanuel Kemek from UCB. Congratulations. Come up on stage. Welcome. Congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. Isabel, congratulations. Congratulations and thank you. So, the EULAR honorary members are? So, EULAR honorary members are people who have been working very much for EULAR and are people from inside EULAR have been working in the standing committees or other places for a long time, but also some people from outside our European area. And we have two special people from outside Europe, but I'll first start with Lene Terslev from Denmark, then Erik Matheson from the United States, Lai Shan Tam from Hong Kong, Roxandra Ionesco from Romania, Annette de Tura from Denmark, and Desiree van der Heide from the Netherlands. Please. They all did a great job. Give them a big round of applause. Thank you. Lene, congratulations. Eric, thank you very much. Let's so, so, thank you very much. But we will continue. It's not the end, it's the beginning. Alexander, thank you very much. Perhaps another round of applause, Annette, then it's, thank you, very you know. Much. What did you eat this morning? You are, you're, you're not very energetic today, you. are you? Thank you? I hope this is getting better in the next days, ladies and gentlemen. So, we have the last category, Hans, I think. Euler Meritorious Service Award in Rheumatology. R. So this is the highest honor we are able to give. Yes. And this year we're giving it to one of our pediatric friends, Alberto Martini from Italy, who has been working together with us for many, many years. And for Marius Columos from Cyprus, who has been an advocate of the patients for many, many years. Congratulations. Auguri Alberto. Congratulations. Thank you. Marius. Nice to have you here, Marius. Yeah, come on. Congratulations. Be proud of it. Thank you. Congratulations to all our winners. Thank you so much, Hans. I think you have you have now a little bit I break to to breathe and to relax a bit. Thank you to Hans. Thank you to Lisette for giving us the prize. It's good to have you here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, now it's time to take a musical break with a very, very special guest. James Rhodes turns the traditional classical concert into an inclusive experience, you will see. He shares his love and passion for the music he credits in saving his life in such a way that allows everyone to connect with him. Rhodes is an incredibly charming communicator. He uses his own unique brand uh, of humor and fascinating insights in making classical music accessible to everyone. His memoir and international bestseller, Instrumental, is being adapted for the big screen and due for cinematic release. He is uh, here today with a very, very special pr performance, Music and the Inner World. So please welcome on stage the one and only Mr. James Rhodes. Bienvenido, James.
Thank you. Gracias. Welcome to Madrid, greatest city on earth, in my opinion. I've been living here nearly, well, 18 months. Um, that piece of music was written, it was composed by a guy called Alessandro Marcello, and he composed it for the oboe. And Bach, the great Bach, he fell in love with it, and he made an arrangement for the piano. Thank God, because I'm really shit at playing the oboe. <laughs> But I, I chose to play that piece today because I heard it for the first time when I was in a hospital. I was in a psychiatric hospital um, for nine months, and not one of the nice ones, one, one, of the, one of the ones where you're not allowed anything. There was no music, no books, no phones, no nothing. And a friend of mine smuggled in, uh, they'd just been released, an iPod Nano. Do you remember those tiny little things? He put it in a shampoo bottle and he got it to me. And on it was that piece of music. And it changed everything for me. Because it went underneath words. It cut through all the medication that I was on. And for the first time in a long time, music gave me access to that inner world and, and gave me a sense of, of hope, of wanting to stay alive, of wanting to get well. And obviously, we all know the benefits of learning an instrument, playing an instrument, even listening to music. And of course, it's not going to obviate the need for biologics, for um, inflammatory mediators whatever the fuck they are. I watched three episodes of House before coming here. I've done my research. Um, I know exactly what your life is like now. Um, <laughs> but it can make things just a little bit better. That's been my experience. We, have, we seem to have forgotten how to listen as a world, as a society. And of course we need to listen. Doctors need to listen to their patients and patients to the, their doctors and, and nurses. and. Surgeons don't listen to anyone ever, <laughs> except God. Um, but we need to be able to listen more, and music gives us the opportunity to do that. And I'd like to try a little experiment in a minute. I only have about five minutes left. They're extremely strict on time here. It's, you can tell it's been organized by Switzerland, can't you? <laughs> I'm sure there's like a sniper up there somewhere with a, with a watch. Um, <laughs> You're spending your lives looking after people, saving lives, whether it's research or whether it, you're a doctor or a nurse, and, and that's incredible. But I also, I wonder who's looking after you. And I sometimes feel that if we can just take four or five minutes a day to stop and put our phones away and close our eyes and that awful word, mindfulness, duh. But there is some reason to it. We know that, the benefits of it. And music is the way in for me. So what I'm going to do, in a minute, I'm going to play you a piece of music by a composer called Gluck. It's from his opera, Orfeo and Eurydice. It's a beautiful piece of music. And I just want you to, I'm going to ask them to turn the screens off in a minute and lower the lights. And if you could just humor me a little bit and close your eyes while I play this piece and just try and find a way into that inner world. Just be aware of what happens in your body while it's happening. And I just can't help feeling that if you do that for four or five minutes a day with a decent pair of headphones, it's not going to make everything better, but it will just make life a little bit shinier. And God knows, open a newspaper today, we need that. Um, so can we turn off the screens and lower the lights? And I'm going to play you this piece of Gluck. And I hope you'll keep your phones in your pockets and listen to this and see where it takes you.
I am kind of floating in the room. A little bit. It's amazing. You are amazing. No. Yes, thank you so much. Hans, would you come up on stage uh, with me? And, and James, where, where is he? Oh, sorry. It's amazing to close the eyes, but it's also amazing to watch your hands while you are playing. Thank you. I mean, I'm... Do you want to take the micro oh, for a right? minute? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. No, I, I'm really not amazing. You guys are amazing. You guys are I'm saving here. lives. I, I just play the fucking piano. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really, what you do, I'm in awe of. I, I don't even know what cytokines are, but um, enjoy the conference. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have the right words in Spanish, no? The language? Más the menos. palabrotas? Sí, las palabrotas, por supuesto. Yeah, okay. How do you feel in Madrid? Everything good? Sí, everything's better in Madrid. Well, I come from London, so of course everything's better in Madrid. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, uh, oh. The agency uh, which organizes this is Swiss. Yes, I can tell. But yes, I'm Spanish. <laughs> yes. And I'm always on time. So your cliche, please. No, I know. You know? It's the first time I've ever done a concert in Spain that started exactly on time. <laughs> first yeah. time. The agency was good, you know? That's the, the point. Very nice. James Rhodes, thank you so much for thank being with for us. Thank you for having me. Gracias. Given un fuerte aplauso, por favor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, James. Thanks. <laughs> oh. I think this micro is broken now. German technology. Hans, some closing words, please. Yes, I think so. Our scientific committee, under the leadership of Thomas Dörner and John Isaacs, has done an amazing job. And also the pediatric, under the leadership of Michael Bereschot, has done an amazing job. In addition, our corporate member friends have made a very good satellite program. So I'm sure, I'm sure that you will enjoy wonderful days at this Congress, and I hope that this session brought you in the right mood to start. Please enjoy and see you at many places. Thank you so much. Enjoy the Congress. Muchísimas gracias y hasta pronto. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Well done. Thank you.